ओम शांति सो आवर या इफ यू हैव द फोन्स ऑन कैन यू जस्ट साइलेंस देम इट इज such a beautiful day i would say after the heat huh? we have all been cooled down by nature and uh, our sister rohini has chosen a beautiful subject using our inner strength to overcome negativity and it is always seen that human beings if they have developed negativities or weaknesses i would say in other words the weaknesses is because there is lack of strength so originally just as a small child who has all the strength and vigor and he runs here and there he is so active but gradually what happens the strength comes down and some of the other weakness in the body physical body also um, overpowers but if we regularly keep ourselves strong in some way or the other that weakness cannot overpower so similarly in the soul also we were blessed with so many powers we were blessed with the strength but over a period of time what happened that some weakness started coming in our lives from copper age if we look at the cycle it is seen that there are four ages golden age silver age copper age and iron age golden age and silver age were the best period of time where each and every soul was completely empowered with so many powers but from copper age there was some of the other the strength was lost and so the weakness started coming in and this is how in kali yuga we find or in the iron age it is completely people are overpowered with the weaknesses and the strength is gone completely so now is the time to recreate ourselves and for that we need to regenerate ourselves with the soul power and it is only then that we are able to overcome all the weaknesses that we have in our life so we find that the weaknesses have empowered us in kali yuga so now we need to awaken our inner powers our inner strength the more we are able to awaken that we find that gradually we are able to empower ourselves in such a way that we are entitled to go into that golden age of kingdom <laughs> so this two aspect the inner strength and the weakness in indian culture or indian mythology it is shown in the form of goddess and ravan ravan symbolizes the weaknesses and the goddess who has eight arms shown with weapons this is the symbol of the strength the soul is so divine when it regains its divinity then it is able to become the embodiment of his powers and that is when we can overcome the weaknesses that is within us so this is negativity and that is the positivity reawakening process it's all about reawakening it is there lying there in a dormant stage 
we need to reawaken it and so we all know about the eight powers that we are all blessed with now if we begin with all these powers where do we begin with it is seen that the first power about tolerance tolerance is a very great power and so we find that there is an example of a tree which is in full bloom and it is said that even the woodcutter would come to cut the tree the tree will give it shade he can rest there at have his lunch there he would not say he is going to cut me so i'm not going to give my huh, shade to this person no he is not biased at all he would tolerate everything and there is a story of mahatma buddha that once mahatma buddha was sitting in his meditation and a person comes up and started saying so many bad words so many bad words for an hour or so and mahatma buddha was completely still and smiling face and after an hour or so this person asked mahatma buddha have you heard what i have said and mahatma buddha opened his eyes and said brother if somebody gives you something and which is of no use to you and if you don't accept whom does it stay with whatever you have been giving me nothing of my, was of my use so i have not accepted it so the person realizes so if he is not accepted was i saying all these bad things to myself only and that realization changed him changed his mentality completely so tolerance in order to have this power what is the strength that is required hmm? which is the strength that is required to develop this power the strength that is required is love and forgiveness love and forgiveness this is the strength that is required then only that power to tolerate can be developed within us so these values they are the strength so one is powers one is values which is the strength and the weakness the negativity in order to overcome the negativity i need the power but in order to have that power i need to uh, awaken this values in my life this values have to be there in my life then only i can overcome the negativities the power will overcome so to develop that power love and forgiveness just as a mother tolerates child's each and every mischief how because she has love it is said that the mother can tolerate the child's mischief because she has so much of love and even after that if someone says your child is like this she is not ready to listen the love would not allow her to listen and she tolerates with happiness each and every thing that the child does or either there should be forgiveness the great souls they forgave and so it was easy for them to tolerate then but that strength can overcome which weakness tolerance enables us to overcome anger if there is no forgiveness 
it is difficult to tolerate and there will be a lot of anger generated. So the weakness that we have in today's life, anger, which people want to control, they want to overcome, but it is because we are not able to forgive or either we do not have that love, unlimited love which Baba talks about. That love has to be there in order to uh, overcome this weakness of anger. So the negativity is there and we all know that anger is not alone. It has so many children. Hmm? The children are irritation, agitation, all this. Hmm? Yes. So, to overcome this weakness, is this negativity, especially this is the root of all the other weaknesses. And for that, we have to have the power of tolerance. But the power of tolerance can only come when there is love and forgiveness. The love will enable us to forgive. So when I develop that soul vision for each and every one, then that let, allows me to love everyone as my brothers. Isn't it? And that helps us to overcome this root cause of so many weaknesses, anger. Otherwise, we see in the world today, because of anger, what is happening? Terrorism is increasing day by day. People do not care for the lives of people. And anger has become so extreme, has reached its extreme. And there is no U-turn for people from there. They give up their lives only, that's all. But the anger still remains. They are not able to overcome that anger. So tolerance helps us to overcome it. The second power in the eight powers, we all know the lesson of eight powers. Isn't it? The second power is the power to accommodate. And it is beautifully shown all the rivers, waters are merging in the ocean. And the ocean is accommodating. The rivers sometimes flood. They cross their limits and flood. But the ocean never cross its limits, never floods. It goes on accommodating. The rivers may throw rubbish into the water and that water will go into the ocean, the rubbish water. But still the ocean would never say, please don't throw this rubbish into my... Ocean goes on accommodating. So in order to develop this power of accommodation, which is the strength we need to have, which is the strength, anyone can have an idea and which weakness can we overcome with that. And this is wonderful when I was churning on this lesson, huh? because she sent me beforehand. So when I was churning on this, so, in order to have this power of accommodation, the two things that we, the two values that we need to have, the best example I've given here, that there are two ladies. And when these two ladies get, get together, what do they do? Okay. How can so many ladies be together and don't say anything? <laughs> they don't fight. They ask the first question. Now, these two ladies, when they get together, there is some point when they start gossiping. There is some of the other type of gossip that is going on. So they are both gossiping about their daughter-in-law or maybe the third one. And then one day it happens so that daughter-in-law comes to meet this lady. And she said, what happened to you? You look like, you don't look good. You are not happy. And... How did you come to know? She asked. 
oh your mother in law was complaining about you you have any problems you can share with me you know now that that the daughter in law will go so when she comes home and what happens the fights begin it, then after that it becomes so difficult to accommodate one another so in order to have the accommodation power of it, maturity of what we speak when to speak where to speak how much to speak maturity has to be there and the second thing that we need to accommodate openness that is what is shown in the ocean how can the ocean accommodate because of the depth and the depth is the maturity and the vastness the vastness is the openness so when both are there when this strength is there in a person they can have the power to accommodate and that will help us to overcome which negativity yes which negativity will be there to overcome which negativity anyone jealousy jealousy when there is jealous we cannot jealousy we cannot accommodate jealousy hatred both this ha huh? very subtle when there are jealousy like as i said somebody said something to the daughter in law and there is jealousy and why did she say to the daughter in law because she was jealous about that lady how can they be living so peacefully and in harmony if my house is like this let her house also be in fire so people are jealous when you are living peacefully in your house they feel how is it that they are not fighting they are jealous about your peacefulness and that is why they feel no they in their house also some problem must be going on they cannot accommodate So there's something I think it is common. Yes, maturity. We keep on spreading some things which some weaknesses here and there in the gossip, unknowingly. It is not intentionally. Also, unknowingly in talks, maybe we are talking something, and we hardly realize that whatever we have said is going to carry out some different message. and there will be problems for me only in the future times the openness is not there what we saw the openness openness of the mind when a person is open they don't care let it be but when a person is closed minded then they are not able to accommodate isn't it then it becomes difficult for them to accommodate so maturity and openness this two strength has to be awakened then only we can have the power to accommodate and then we can overcome that jealousy nobody can sow any seeds of jealousy in our family and there will be such harmony and we'll be able to accommodate one another very easily what is openness acceptance acceptance we all know everyone has some of the the weakness but when the acceptance is there with an open heart then only everything will be very easily smooth in the life so this negativity which is ruining the quality of life of people but still they don't understand about it they don't understand why this is happening because where, somewhere there is some immaturity which is working and because of that immaturity all these problems are coming up we hardly realize it is very subtle 
This is why Baba says that we have to develop this eight powers in our life. And this eight powers only will come when I have these values which are attached. So these two values will help us to come overcome this weakness and we are able to adorn ourselves with the powers. Isn't it? Then the third, the third power is the power to discriminate. It is always shown that a jeweler is able to discriminate between the real diamonds and the false diamonds. Imitation. Yeah? And how is he able to do that? Which are the two values that are needed for that? Yes. And? Knowledge. Knowledge, yes. Knowledge and the clarity of thoughts. When the focus is clear, we can identify what is true, what is false, what is good, what is bad, what is uh, that we have to take care of, etc. So knowledge and the clarity of thoughts. These two values are going to help us overcome which weakness? Which comes up because of Lack of power to discriminate or discern. And that is, we can conquer attachment. Huh? Attachment, when attachment is too great, we do not discern whether what am I doing, whatever I am doing is right or wrong. We don't understand. We feel whatever we are doing is right. But because of that attachment, when it increases and becomes possessiveness, that is when people, they get irritated. They would not want that. And the one who is having attachment is not able to realize, is not able to discern this is wrong. People try to tell that person, whatever you are doing is wrong. But they are not able to realize that. So when we have clarity of thoughts, knowledge, spiritual knowledge, we overcome attachment, which is very subtle. Can you have a few more examples? The attachment is so many huh? Many examples. Yeah. You know, in huh? People say love. It's love when, but the love when it becomes possessive. You know, I can't let it go. I want to hold it very tightly. I and I have the, the right on this person. Nobody can have the right as much as I have. So I'm not able to discriminate that I'm crossing my lines. And the person for whom I have this attachment, whom I feel it is love, but the other one feels as if my freedom is gone. My freedom, I'm losing my freedom. I cannot go to the places I want to go because the person who has attachment wants to hold me back. I will take you. I will let do it for you. But let me do. The person would always, let me do, no. Why should you do everything for me? But no, we are not able to discriminate that this is something wrong. It is making the person choke. It is choking the person. And we are not realizing it because of the attachment. So D. Yeah. So these are very subtle things. Similarly, the next power to decide. And in order to decide, take accurate decisions, what are the values needed? Huh? What are the values that are seen? Can you see what are the values that are shown? Huh? <laughs> Concentration and stability, mental stability. 
when there is stability, our focus, our concentration is very accurate. If the, we are not stable inside, if a person is disturbed, then when he hits the bow and arrow, if you have seen an archer, when he let go of his arrow, and if it is a little bit here, a, a centimeter, less than a centimeter, a millimeter, his hand went like this. But there at the target, you find it is this much. Little bit here, and there is a vast difference there in the result. So similarly, when we see that when our focus is not, are we disturbed? We are not able to take accurate decisions. No focus is there. And with that, which are the weakness, which are the negativities that we have to overcome? Influence of ego. And then person is not able to accept his ego is so much. Oh, whatever I have said, whatever I have decided, that has to be done. The ego is there. So, when there is ego, wrong decisions. We cannot take accurate judgment. Isn't it? So, you can see the connection, the power, the values and the negativities. How it is affecting our lifestyle. And that is why this knowledge helps us to develop these powers by awakening the values in us, the positive energy. When that is awakened, the negative energy can be completely, we can win over those negativities. Huh? Endurance. Yes, yes. Cannot tolerate no endurance power. So naturally, there also anger is connected with the ego. When a person has ego and someone tells something and it is not accepted, there is anger, we cannot tolerate. So these all powers are also interconnected. Is it? That is why the weaknesses are also connected, the negativities are also connected when there is ego, less endurance. When less endurance is there, so when we give something, take any judgment, we give our judgment, we give our decision, but it is not accepted. And when that is not accepted, there is, we cannot tolerate and there is anger generated. And that makes so much of problems, creates so much of problems. And it changes the quality of our lives. And then we are not happy. Interesting, Anna. Eh, no? Very interesting. Oh, I was one day sitting in and I was like, how can we develop these powers? It is not that easy to develop any power. Eh, no? But at least values we can generate. Values is easy. Values are there. Then the power is awakened. And with the power I can overcome it. So that is why Baba says when you have powers you can overcome all negativities. Because it is very deeply connected. Very deeply connected. We have to understand that. That's okay. The next power is the power to face. Power to face. Now sometimes we are not able to understand when to tolerate, when to face. And this is the mistake that we make. When we have to tolerate, we face. When we really have to face, we start tolerant. So when do, first we have to identify when to tolerate, when to face. Yes? Anybody? When should we face? When should we tolerate? First tolerate and face. Name, what, what, 
what should we tolerate and what should we face? Like, it is what it is. I am who I am. So first, I'm okay. But you're not okay, I'm not okay, but it's okay. So tolerate anything. Then face what I do now. Courage. Mm. Actually, we have to tolerate people and we have to face situations. We have to face circumstances. Isn't it? But when tolerance comes, it is only to people. But in today's world, what is the mistake people do? People face people and tolerate situation. Huh? Supposing if somebody has said some bad words to me, insulted me, I confront, I face, I, I feel why has he said this to me? I am going to say four words. He has said me two words, I can show him, I can say four words. So this is how we face people and that is when relationships are spoiled. We cannot forgive, we cannot love that person. Right? And when we cannot forgive, we cannot love that person, then anger and anger again and again the fire starts burning. So whenever a person has said something bad, let me tolerate. Ignore that person. Yes. Just ignore. If he is saying some bad words where it is hurting me, he is saying out of immaturity, let it be. Let me not go into that and confront him. Where is it going to hurt me, whatever he has said? So ignore. Even if it hurts here, let me see when, as Baba many a time say, if somebody has said something and it has hurt you, means whatever he has said is right. So if he said right and he's, if he has shown me a mirror or if he has made me realize, then it is better for me to improve. Isn't it? Bring the change. And when you change, ultimately when you get the result of that change, you will thank that person. Finally, you will thank that person. But it's not that simple. Yeah, it's not that simple, definitely. So we haven't made it through. We have listened to this plan for the last 50 years. Yes. And still we have not come because we have not applied it. And why the application was not there? Maybe I did not know that this is the time for its application. Like when a person is saying bad words and if I feel, well, whatever he is saying, he is saying out of immaturity. And if he is saying with understanding and if it really hurts me, then it's a time for me to realize and bring the change. And if I am not able to do that, means my ego is there. And that is why the anger would also come. I won't be able to forgive that person. I won't be able to love that person. And then whatever decisions I would take will be completely wrong. That is why there is so much of hatred. There is so much of fights going on in today's world. Wars are because of that. So what is the quality of the world that we are changing into? And who is responsible? It's the human beings only. Their zero tolerance is bringing all these things. Their zero tolerance is bringing all these things. Then, when a person becomes instrument to bring a situation, then also I face the situation, not that person. Person is just an instrument. But I need to face the situation. And in order to face the situation, what values do we need? Courage. We need fear, fearlessness and courage. 
These are the two things. Because in order to face that fire which is burning so much, burning all the values, burning the quality of human life. Right? And with that, which negativity can be overcome? We can overcome desires. Human desires are such that does not allow them to face. Desires is such that we know it is wrong, but we cannot face it. So I become the form of desires. Desires are endless. Yes, they are endless. And once if I if I challenge myself, what's the need? Why for? Etc. Then I overcome it. I can face. I, I do not become subservient to anything then. But the moment I become subservient and I cannot face that person, then I cannot uh, overcome. And then one desire will lead to many desires. Hmm. Yes, maybe, yeah. Because we cannot love, because they are not giving respect, we feel they are not giving respect. But I should develop myself into that worthiness that they respect automatically. That's why it said, do not demand respect, command respect. We command with our behavior, with our positivity. The moment we start forgiving with an open heart, then definitely they will feel about it. And they will give respect automatically. They will feel, we have done so much bad, but still look at the person. There's such a big heart. She has forgiven us. So then, they naturally respect you. Some you also respect. Definitely. Your actions. Yes, yes. Self-respect. Yes, the more respect, if I just go out taking a ball, please respect me, please respect me, nobody is going to give respect. How much do I respect my own values? How much do I respect my specialities that God has blessed me with? Then I'll say the more I have respect for myself, others will also respect. Asking for respect, nobody is going to respect. So the, in order to face the situation, we have to have, be courageous, fearless, and then we can overcome the desires. When we become subservient to desires, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then I'm asking for a per, from a person, can you fulfill my desires? And then the person would make me subservient to some other situation where I'll be trapped, where I'll be trapped. They may make me an instrument to do something wrong also. Why? Because I wanted that person to fulfill a small desire. So now he takes the advantage of it. In a, he can make me do anything which is wrong, which my conscience is going to bite me, but I cannot say no. I am subservient. So there, because we have tolerated, then we go on tolerating that person. We get frustrated also inside. But we cannot come out of it. Why? Because he had fulfilled my small desire and I became subservient to that person. This is what is happening in the world. Why are people taking advantages of people? Making them do wrong things. 
and they are not able to face them. They can not challenge that situation which they are forced to do by that person. They go on tolerating and becoming a victim. So desires. So the knowledge is so practical, Baba's knowledge is so practical. It just lights up here. And then we start realizing the deep connection. So for people who have become weak in today's world, it is very difficult to, if we say, go on, get these powers, you will develop through it. It cannot be developed in meditation like that only. First, I have to awaken the values which are there. And all these values that I am showing, they are connected with the seven values of the soul. They are connected with the seven values of the soul. Very deeply connected. That is why it is easy to awaken this values because that is my inherent qualities and when I awaken these values the powers are easily developed and that is how I can overcome the negativity. Simple, isn't it? That sounds simple because it's the right technique. It's the right technique. Then comes the power to cooperate. Right? Now in order to cooperate, which are the values that we need? Huh? We need love and understanding. And there is love, understanding or we can say love or respect. We cooperate always where we have respect. Isn't it? Where our heart respects. And there is understanding. That is where we can cooperate easily. And with that, which are the weakness that we are able to overcome? We are able to overcome or conquer hatred and equanimity. Enmity. So we are able to overcome hatred and enmity. Huh? Cooperation. You know the story once, the, the devtas and the asuras. You know the story? The devils. The devils. So it is said why the devils are there and why the deities are so worshipped. Because once it is said to Indra, the king Indra, he organized a beautiful lunch for the deities and he invited the devils as well. So the devils they thought today also Indra would try to play some trick with us. So we should be very careful that we do not get trapped in his trick. So the deities in one hall and the devils in the other hall, the lunch was equal both for them it was equal but then the Indra said look you have to have the food we have 56 varieties of food today the best of all foods but there is one condition you can only eat the food with your hands straight these hands cannot be folded and you have to eat this food so the devils, they said, look, this is the trick. He doesn't want us to eat the food. So he has put this condition. So the devils, they asked Indra, have you put the same condition for the deities also? Yes, both of you. Can we see? So yes, everybody's hands were tied up with a stick so that it cannot be bent. And now you have to eat the wonderful food. All the delicious food that was served. And the devils, they just 
started growing up and trying to catch in their mouth huh? and they spoiled the whole hall and sometimes they were fighting also because when they threw it up it went into the mouth of somebody else so they were all dirty they messed up the whole hall and everything and then they said okay let us go and see how the deities the deities are doing and they were all peacefully having their food because they are feeding one another <laughs> so the harmony the understanding the love was there so much amongst the deities that the devils they had hatred enmity amongst them also so they were not able to eat the food so cooperation out of love and understanding can finish off the hatred and animosity oh nice story yes no <laughs> then comes the power to withdraw and in order to have this power to withdraw practically working we need the values of detachment and introspection from time to time the the tortoise is completely detached the moment he sees something some sort of fear or anything he withdraws its self into the shell and withdrawing means detachment from the external so he does not become a victim and when he takes himself inside he introspects so similarly from time to time if i also know i do not have to withdraw myself from the external world i have to be in the world but from time to time i need to do a little bit of introspection and detach myself from the external world for few moments also so that i have time for my own self introspect go within listen and what do we overcome with that when we have this detachment introspection we are able to overcome greed because that is holding everyone the greed that does not allow us to detach that does not allow us to do some introspection huh? dollars dikhte rehte hain dikhte rehte hain is it so that is where people are caught up they are not able to withdraw themselves and they can't introspect right huh yeah. oh, good and the last power is the power to back up with all the values we can make our life valuable huh oh, this is why we need this powers so that we are able to gradually put a full stop where we really have to and make our life the most valuable and by packing up all the waste we have to become empowered we have to become empowered so that we pack up all the waste isn't it so developing this inner strength to overcome the negativities which is catching hold of us right and that is why ganesha is shown who is worshiped why because he is said to be the lord of wisdom and the lord of wisdom because he has this eight powers very well developed power to tolerate always blessing even those who curse him or say bad things to him he will bless he can tolerate no problem together with that power to accommodate the big stomach he can accommodate whatever people has told him he will never tell outside and the power to discriminate the small eyes far sightedness as it is said is far sighted so power to discriminate very well because of the wisdom that he has and then 
one leg up and one leg down shows that he is uninfluenced and impartial and down to earth decisions. We have to be impartial. So one leg up and one leg on the ground. We cannot take decisions up in the air which nobody can follow. It has to be practical. They have to be down to earth. So one leg down, one leg up. Impartial, uninfluenced, down to earth decisions. And then is the trunk, the power to face. It is said that a trunk, he can uproot the biggest trees also. Huh? The trunk with the trunk, he knows how to uproot biggest trees also. Big trees. Huh? He can uproot the trees also with the trunk. That is the strength he has in the trunk. But if a child comes, he can gently pick up the child with that trunk. And so it is so balanced between gentleness and hard. He knows when to be hard. He knows when to be soft with the trunk. So the power to face. How to face? Hardness or softness? We have to face, but sometimes we have to adopt softness also. Not always hardness. Huh? We, may, we may break somebody's heart if we be very hard. So softness also is required, isn't it? And then the laddu shows power to cooperate. Laddu, the all small, small bundis, they are gathered together with the sweetness. So where there is sweetness, we are able to unite everyone. And there is cooperation. Huh? It is sweet. Then the head knows when to withdraw and presence of mind. Using the presence of mind, he knows when to withdraw and when to get attached. And with that, big ears. Good listener, power to pack up. He knows when to be a good listener and when to listen and when to ignore. So Ganesha, we worship him because of the eight powers. Very powerful. And not only that, it is shown that Ganesha has two wives. Riddhi and Siddhi. Riddhi means right method and Siddhi means success. That you can achieve success with the right method on the basis of these eight powers. Right? You won't find this in any other uh, pictures of the world because this is self created by me. I know. That's why everyone is speaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't have the picture of Riddhi and Siddhi? <laughs> so this is Riddhi and this is Siddhi. These are the two wives of Ganesha. Huh? Yes, Riddhi means right method, means whatever he did in life, he did it with the right method and he achieved success. That is why he is worshipped so, so much that everything begins with Ganesha. Any, any auspicious task is begin with, it, begin with the worship of Ganesha. Yeah, because of the eight powers, there are no obstacles in his life. Similarly, if I have these eight powers, there won't be any obstacles in my life. Obstacles come because of, a, that's why it is said in the world also, problems are the creation of a weak mind. When the mind is weak or when it is uh, empowered by weaknesses, it is taken over by weaknesses, then only obstacles come. So Ganesha had no obstacles and he is the remover of obstacles. From everybody's life because he's inspiring us to 
to inculcate these eight powers so that there are no obstacles in our life also. Huh? Yes, we have to work upon these powers, yes. And we have to develop them fully on the basis of values only. We can't do other than that. It is on the basis of those values only that we are able to develop these powers fully. And then it is very easy for us to overcome all weaknesses and the obstacles also. And then our method will, uh, our life will be always on the right method, achieving success in each and every small work also we do. So it is said success is not a destination, it's a journey. So in each and every action that we do in our life, we get success. That is why it, says, it is said, success is not a destination, it's a journey. So whatever small work I do, but in that also, am I getting success? Am I succeeding at each and every step? Then I'm moving for, further in my life with great satisfaction. There is contentment in the quality of life that I'm leading. Otherwise, there is no contentment. If there is no inner contentment, if I am not contented with myself, how are others going to be contented with me? And how is God going to be contented with me? That this person is not leading the life which is meant for that person. So he is also not contented with me. Right? So this is how we overcome our negativities, our weaknesses on the basis of the strength and the powers. Okay, any questions? Even your wife's family to work on. Yes, look. They always say all is good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The connection is loose, I think. The connection is loose somewhere. There's only one question. When are we going to really understand that we are in the suffering? Yeah. 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 That is where Baba says you constantly go on listening to the knowledge and then churning it. That will give you the result. It is not a one day process, it is a continuous process. Till the end of the life, yes. This is so beautiful because you know we always sit down and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Every time. Every yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Because now I can explain to my family. They follow. But yeah, they yeah, do, yeah. But yeah. now they will understand. Mm. It, you, you may tell the story of Ganesha also. It is said that when Shankar wanted to meditate, he wanted to go for a tapasya. So Parvati says that I'll be left alone. So somebody should be there to give me company. So he created Ganapati. He created Ganesha. So when he created Ganesha, he was a small... So he said Parvati will be busy with her looking after the child. And so he went on his tapasya. And the child came. And by the time he came back, Ganesha was big. So Ganesha never saw the father. And the father also was, he had only seen the small child and he came back. He was big, big boy. So he wanted to enter into the house and Ganesha stops him. My, my, my mother has asked me not anyone to allow anyone to enter the house. So he stops him. And then it is said that. Shankar is requesting, 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 but the child would not understand. He is following the instructions of the mother. So, he doesn't allow. So, Shankar got so annoyed that he cut the head of Ganesha. And then he went inside and Parvati said, didn't Ganesha stop you? He said, yeah, that boy, he stopped me. And why didn't you listen to him? It, he was following my instructions. How can you come inside? 
So, uh, Shankar said, oh, was it that son whom I created so many years? Yes, and he's so good and so obedient. How can you just... So he said, she starts crying. I want my child back. So then it is said that Ganesha said, okay, don't cry. Tomorrow morning, whoever comes first, I'll cut his head and put it on him and again revive him. So the early morning, the elephant comes. So according to his promise, he had to cut the head of the elephant and put it on him. Now, many a times children ask us this question. If he could have cut the elephant head and place it on, his head must also be falling there only. He could have taken it and placed it back again and revived. Why did he commit another mistake by killing an elephant? So it is violence, how can this be? But actually it is all spiritual significance. That when Baba, Shri Baba comes, we are all his children, not following the instructions properly. So we are behaving in our own stubborn ways. In Kali Yuga, we are in stubborn ways. So first of all, what he does is cut off our heads. The ego. And places the elephant head which has all these powers, the wisdom. So when that is placed, the person starts behaving on the basis of the wisdom. And so he develops all these powers in his life and is able to use the right method and achieve success at every step. So this is the spiritual significance. That the ego has to be cut. Then only these powers can be developed. So that is why Ravan is shown with ten heads. That head has to be cut off. Till then wisdom cannot come. Until and unless ego is not gone, Till then the wisdom cannot descend. Right? Okay, any, any other question? No? So I have a wonderful story to tell the children now and make them understand why we observe. And that is when Shankar said to Parvati because she was saying, oh, he's looking ugly. So he said, even before my puja, his puja will be done first. So that is why he is given that importance. And that is how he becomes the remover of obstacles. And it is said, he had two wives and two children. And you know the names of the two children? Shub and Lab. That is why on... Uh, uh, Shubla. That is why whenever there is an opening of a new building or anything, we write Shubhlab. Huh? Huh? Because when anything is done with the right method and achieves success, there is always going to be Shub auspicious and Lab benefiting. It is going to give you benefit only. Huh? Good luck, yeah. Good luck, Shubh or Lab. Actually, it is said Shubh is auspicious and Lab. Whenever you get Lab, you get uh, benefit. You turn the word Lab, Bhala. When you do Bhala for everyone, you get Lab. If you cannot do Bhala, means if you cannot, uh, good for somebody, you cannot be benefited. Their blessings are going to benefit you. So these are the two children of Ganesha. Shubh and Lab. Hobalaya. Indian mythology has so beauty, beauty in it, but people are not understanding it. So they are doing it without any understanding. And then if their children ask them, how is it? How can you believe an elephant god? How can you believe this? Weren't there people with good faces? Uh, many questions and we can't answer their questions.